All right, guys, this is the limiting reactant lab, and this is gonna take part in a couple of stages. Um, if you were in class, we would try and get this all done in one class period. Um, seeing as how this is a recording, I'm gonna actually allow some time in between the different stages to make sure that we collect everything that we can. So the first thing that we have is we have point, approximately 0.6 grams of magnesium sulfate. In fact, the actual mass is 0 0.64 grams. That's what I actually massed out. I also have approximately 1.1 grams of sodium carbonate. The actual mass is 1.14 grams. So I'm going to add each of these to their own beaker. Try and get as much of that solid in there as possible. We don't wanna lose anything. Okay. Transfer as much of that solid as we can. Don't wanna lose anything. Up, oh, you can see that we've already lost a little bit. That will go 2% error. Okay, we're gonna add 10 mils of water to each to create what we call an aqueous solution. This allows us to more easily react the substances. It's a little bit hard for the solids to react when they're in solid form. So I'm stirring now, trying to make sure that we get everything dissolved. Since the amount of the uh, water in the solution is irrelevant, I'm actually going to add just a little bit more just to make sure that it's all going to dissolve. Just add a little bit more water. Stir that up again. We don't want any solid remaining. This one seems to be having a harder time dissolving. This one looks much better. Okay. And now we're gonna add them together so that they are going to react and they are going to form a precipitate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add them both to this speaker since this one still has a little bit of solid left undissolved so I don't lose that solid. I'm going to add the magnesium sulfate to the beaker that already has the sodium carbonate in it. That way I'll lose less in the transfer. So, and we stir just once. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sit and we're going to ensure that everything precipitates. So we're going to break here in just a minute, allow this to react fully and completely before we move on to the next stage, which is the filtration. All right, guys, so now that we've allowed the reaction to uh, fully complete, you can see that it is still pretty cloudy. Okay, that's the white precipitate that is suspended uh, within the solution right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter that out. So to do that, I have a ring stand and I have a funnel holder, a glass funnel, and a new beaker to collect all the, uh, what we call a uh, filtrant, which is the uh, liquid portion of the solution that we don't want. What we want is to catch all the solid. So to do that, we have a filter paper. The filter paper has been pre-weighed. It is 1.04 grams. So you'll need to write that down. Okay, so for this to fit in the funnel, you fold it in half, and then you fold it in half again the other way, and you open it up and make a little snow cone cup. And you're gonna place that into the funnel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour 
our solution in. It'll take some time to filter out. Okay, you can actually see it starting to filter the uh, solution through. We want that solution to be clear and colorless. The key is to not go over the rim of the filter paper. You can see there's still some left into this beaker. I haven't caught everything yet, so I'm gonna use a little bit of distilled water to rinse that out. We wanna catch everything. Again, not going over the top of the filter paper. The amount of water does not matter because this precipitate is what we call insoluble, which means it will not dissolve in water. I'm gonna let a little bit more filter before I add the rest of this. I'm trying to catch all the precipitate that we can. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow that to filter through. It will take a little bit of time. And then once we're done filtering, we're going to then uh, move on to the last stage, which is to dry the filter paper so that we can determine the mass of the precipitate that was formed. All right, so now that the filtration is done, you can see that the solution that is left is clear and colorless, exactly what we want. That means there's no precipitate that made it through the filter. You can see that the filter paper has almost this like frosting like look to it. That's all of the white precipitate. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna take the filter paper out very carefully. It's, it's delicate and rips. I'm gonna save that piece of paper. Okay, let's try this again. It's very delicate. Okay, so we're gonna take this out, got it. And we're going to place it on a watch glass. I wanna leave that other piece there because that's part of the mass of the paper that we need to consider. And now what we're going to do, because we have the time in the video, I'm actually gonna place this in the drying oven and allow this to dry out so that when we reweigh it, we're not gonna be considering the mass of the water because the paper is damp. We wanna dry out all of that water. So we're going to go over and place it in the drying oven. If we were doing this in class, we would place this filter on a hot plate covered in aluminum foil to try and dry it out a little bit quicker within the confines of our class period. All right, so here is our drying oven. It's been on so that it uh, has heated up. I'm going to place our precipitate filter paper and watch glass in the drying oven. I'm gonna close the drying oven Make sure it catches. And we're going to let that dry for uh, 30 minutes to an hour or so. Don't want the paper to burn, but we do want to make sure that it is fully dry before we reweigh uh, the filter paper and precipitate that we made. All right, so now that the precipitate has been dried, in the drying oven, we're going to reweigh the filter paper and precipitate. So using the same balance that we used before, we make sure and zero the balance. And then we take our precipitate that came from the drying oven and we place it on the balance. Make sure we get the one little piece that accidentally broke off. We need to include that. And our final mass of the precipitate and filter paper is 1.57 grams. So from that, you can do all the necessary calculations for your lab.